Hi guys, thanks for tuning into the Scan Tool Network. In this video, we're taking a closer look at the iCars of the CR Max being used on a Land Rover vehicle here. It's a 2007 Land Rover Discovery 3. Uh, if you're interested in this product, make sure you use the links in the description below this video. Uh, it'll take you to Diagnostic World, which has the genuine and official products. As there are fakes, there are clones on the market, they can damage your vehicle. So if you want to make sure you're getting the genuine and official product, please make sure you use the links in the description below this video. So it's a fantastic tool this, it uh, covers all makes and models, it's a bi-directional scanner, it covers lots of service functions. Uh, more importantly though, it'll it's going to allow us to diagnose and reset these uh, range of warning lights that we have on this Discovery 3. It may come as no shock to Discovery 3 owners to see their dashboard lit up like a Christmas tree like this and this tool is going to allow us to diagnose and reset them. So first of all what we're going to do is we've got this tool plugged into the diagnostic port of the vehicle. I'm going to click on to diagnostics and we need to select our manufacturer so we just need to find Land Rover. You can either do that by scrolling or you can just select the, the region. So we're going to click Land Rover. Just takes a few seconds to initialize and call up all of the systems. So you can just select your vehicle or you can select the VIN. Um, I'm going to click on the Discovery 3 option. It's a diesel V6. Click OK. It's going to automatically find the VIN code in any case, I think it is. And then it's going to allow us to select our control unit, which is the system in which we wish to diagnose. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we'll go through them. We'll start with the check engine light, which is obviously the engine control module. So we'll just click onto that. And then we're going to click onto read fault code. Um, we'll just click no to that. So it's giving us three fault codes. Uh, each has its own unique fault code and a unique description of fault. So if you're not entirely sure what exactly these means, my advice is to put these this information into a Google search engine. Um, if you're getting this fault, you can guarantee that somebody else will as well. In our case though, we uh, we had a faulty mass airflow sensor or MAF. We've put a new MAF in now, and um, the we need to tell the ECU that we've put a new MAF in. So we do that basically just by clicking on uh, clear fault memory and that sends a message to the ECU. So long as the ECU is happy that the new MAF is working correctly, then it will allow us to turn off this check engine light. So we'll click on clear fault memory and you can see the check engine light has gone straight away there and we'll escape out of that. So we go back to our list of systems and we're going to go to SRS this time which is the airbag system. Uh, what I'm going to do first of all actually is you can see we've got the seatbelt warning light on as well. I'm just going to put the seatbelt on just so there's no confusion and it gets rid of that warning light. Okay so airbag system again we're going to click in and we've got three fault codes here. Um, we've purposely set up this fault so we've initiated this fault we unplugged the connection underneath the driver's seat uh, sorry the passenger seat which has caused this warning light system uh, and faults to come on screen here so once we've plugged everything back in the airbag light is still showing and that's characteristic as if you were to unplug something that you weren't maybe supposed to um, or you did have an airbag fault but you've plugged everything back together but the airbag light won't necessarily turn off on its own you do need the tool to reset it so if we go to clear fault memory erasing fault codes and there we go the airbag light has gone and we've got erase operation done on screen okay so the last system it's telling us there are still two faults in there actually I'll go back into read fault code clear faults it's gone does it come back on it does come back one so maybe we haven't put that back together entirely but I'll come back to that in a second um, the, the last system is the uh, the ABS system which in here it's vehicle dynamics control module I'm going to click into read fault code, it's not a powertrain system. So these are the three faults it's giving us. There was a fault with the right wheel, the, the front right ABS sensor, which we've now popped in. Again though, it's just a case of uh, clearing the fault memory. The ABS system's a little bit different in that the warning lights don't necessarily turn off straight away. Um, sometimes you need to completely come out of the ABS system or indeed start the stop the engine and start it again. Uh, depending on the vehicle that you're in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the engine off 
and then I'm going to pop it back on and we'll see if the ABS lights turn off which they have now the airbag light that has turned off and turned back on again so I suspect that it's probably something to do with the fact that maybe this connection underneath the driver's seat or the passenger seat hasn't been um, put back together properly so I'm just gonna tighten this up here you probably can't see it well you can't see what I'm doing but I'm just tightening this airbag connection back up hopefully that will now allow us to do that again and maybe get rid of that so ABS uh, sorry SRS system clear fault code erase operation done the light has gone off uh, it looks like it's staying off this time which is good so it was just a it, it and in fact that just amplifies the message that we're trying to get across that you know if you if you haven't fixed the fault properly then the warning light will stay on there's a reason that the warning light is on um, and it's not just trying to sort of fox you or anything like that um, a lot of people try and sometimes buy these tools um, and try and reset a warning light even though they haven't fixed the fault and that just goes to show that you can't do that you do need to physically fix the fault before you can get rid of the warning light itself um, so we're going to come out of this and we'll just show you one other thing like that. so we'll go back to the the service menu and these are some of the service functions that you can do with this particular kit like it'll do air suspension calibrations DPF regenerations service resets electronic park and brake opening and closing uh, throttle calibration brake bleeding injector coding but it all really depends on the specific vehicle that you're in so all of these functions won't work on all vehicles if that makes sense um, best thing to do though if you are interested and you are wanting to buy the tool for one of these particular uh, functions is email that email address right there with the vehicle information and hopefully um, the VIN number is also quite crucial uh, email your vehicle information to that email address and they'll be able to tell you whether a certain function works on your particular vehicle or not uh, but remember guys if you are interested in this tool just make sure you use the links in the description below this video because there are fakes there are clones out there and they can damage your vehicle so it's not worth going down that route at all uh, i hope this helps thanks for watching and i'll see you next time